synonymous with great men and great actions. A legend in the annals of aerial warfare. It's important to preserve World War II history, and my part of it being aviation. My grandfather flew airplanes in World War II. My dad flew in Vietnam. I had an aviation career all my life. And now I have a restoration shop that fortunately allows me to preserve World War II history and fly World War II airplanes. I started building plastic airplanes when I was five years old when dad was going through flight training in NAS Pensacola, Florida. I started taking flying lessons when I was 15 years old, soloed on my 16th birthday. My senior year of high school, I was a flight instructor at NAS Lemoore Navy Flying Club. When I soloed on my 16th birthday in Rota, Spain, we lived there and I was not able to drive a car in Europe at age 16, but I was able to fly an airplane. And I would go out on my own and solo from Rota, to Spain. I would fly to Tangiers, Morocco. From there, I'd fly back across the Med to the Rock of Gibraltar. Flying around North Africa to the Mediterranean area, I'd get back home and I'd have to call mom and say, I'm home, come get me, because I couldn't drive. Learning to do the metal shaping and the metal forming of parts that are needed on the airplanes, I'm basically self-taught. Initially, when I got into wanting to learn how to use the air plenishing hammer and the English wheel, I started out with the low-end models and finally realized when I opened my restoration shop that we had to go bigger and more high-end, and that's where Bailey came in to provide the high-end great equipment that we use today on the World War II fighters. This airplane here is 1943 Birdcage Corsair model, Dash 1, the early. Um, they built some 12,750 plus or minus Corsairs from start to finish. This particular airplane is a 297th Corsair out of the 12,000 plus. It's a very early, very unique, very rare airplane. It was recovered many years ago from the South Pacific. It fought at Guadalcanal for a couple years, saw combat until October when it crashed. And it was then used for parts to keep other airplanes flying for the rest of the war. Sat in the jungle until the early 2000 time frame when it was recovered. I've had it here at Vultures Row for about six years now. I've been working on it pretty much every day. So this is an original Corsair early birdcage model nose pole, the front ring that goes around the engine right behind the propeller. This um, is an item that's pretty rare. They're next to impossible to come by. So we developed a process to manufacture the skins, which is a pretty complex compound curve. Not only do you have a variable airfoil to it, but the lip rolls around you know, 130, 150 degrees. So it presents a lot of challenges. This is 2024 aluminum. It's not anything we can weld in aviation. So all of this has to be done with a single sheet from start to finish. We start with 2024-0 and we form it using the Bailey power hammer and the English wheel. And then we have a bunch of proprietary dies that we run the metal through. It's a loop, it's a circle. We go from the English wheel to the power hammer, to the dies, to the English wheel, to the power hammer, back to a different set of dies. And it takes one person about two weeks to make three skins for one airplane. It's a lot of work. But in the end, 
It's pretty satisfying to look at something like this and um, be able to build the nose bowls 100% new in-house. In aviation, we have to use 2024 aluminum in airplanes. We can't uh, make parts out of 5,000 series aluminum or 3,000 series because it's just not strong enough for aviation needs. When we go to make parts, especially compound parts, the 2024 metal we use a lot of times is 2024-0. There's no temper. It's soft. It's really soft. And we form it using the Bailey machines, whether it's the English wheel, power hammer, or the shrinker stretch or the bead roller, they form the metal very, very nicely and very precisely. And then to make it strong, you heat treat 2024-0 in an oven at a certain temperature. And when it comes out and it's quenched in the quench tank, you have metal that is 60, 62, 63,000 PSI in strength. And then once it's heated, it holds that position. It becomes very strong for aviation use. Outer wings for the Corsair are extremely rare, pretty much unobtainable, yet there's a lot of projects that don't have outer wings that fold. So we've developed a program where we're making all the parts. We've yet to have to build outer wings from 100% new, but we have the ability. Thanks to the Bailey equipment, we can make the compound curve leading edges out at the tips where it's not just a straight roll on a Farnham or a slip roll, but you have to use a power hammer and you have to do some metal stretching and forming. We have six jigs and we have uh, six wings in the six jigs right now. Eight more wings to go after that. They're a really complex wing. There's a ton of parts in these outer wing panels. It's just insane how many little widgets just to build the outer wing. We're capable of building every piece of these wings 100% new. We have the Bailey three-wheeler, we call it, for forming the spar caps and rolling those. Here we have an original Corsair wing that is going to be restored. It's in such great shape, it belongs to one of the many Dash 1D airplanes we're doing, that this wing will not need to come apart. It'll get a complete ground up restoration, fresh paint, new fabric. This is the Corsair tail cone jig where we can build the tail of the airplane from the pilot seat to the very rear. The large majority of what happens in the backside of a Corsair happens in this section right here from the tail wheel back. The horizontals, the elevators, the vertical, the rudder, the tail hook, the tail wheel, all the cables, pulleys, hydraulics, it all happens right in this area. Here we have original Corsair tail cone parts. Some of this stuff is gonna be reused in the rebuild of tail cones. Lots of usable castings, forgings, and brackets, and little tiny widgets. So sometimes we have a lot to use, and sometimes we have very little to use. Every airplane is a different story. We have a 3D machine shop here. Three Haas machines. We draw all the items in SolidWorks and three-dimensional off the original OEM engineering drawings, CNC programming, and we have a VF5SS with a fourth axis, fifth axis. We have a CNC lathe for compound lathe turning equipment, and then yet another vertical mill. We support the industry worldwide for Warbirds, whether it be Corsairs or uh, Connies or TBMs or Dauntless, Hellcats. When people break parts, and the parts will break, they're 80 years old, we're capable of manufacturing new parts to fit just like originals, per original specs. So the crew at Vultures Row Aviation is a very diverse crew. Metal fabricators, of machinists, the paint shop, um, riveting, authenticity, and the one thing that they're all passionate about is the preservation of World War II aircraft. It's some of the best I could ever imagine being involved with. And fortunately, I get to do it every day.